Welcome. It is the first and the last first episode of your boys in the house doing punts and blunts. You got your boy Lou House in the building. Let my boys introduce themselves. What's going on? All the way from Toledo, Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Adam Miranda, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all couldn't hear that because I did editing, but I said something really funny. What up? Greenfield, Nico. Smoke weed every day. And all the way from the ONA. You already introduced yourself. You already introduced yourself. Don't do it again. I'm not. I'm just saying I'm all the way from the ONA, Omaha, Nebraska. So, anyway, we're here and we're going to talk about. The NFL season so far. And not only are we going to talk about it, we're going to judge each game for you guys. So, first things first. Let me tell you what the show is called. Like I said, it's called Punts and Blunts. What we're doing on here is we're talking about the NFL season, NFL games, and we're going to give our predictions. And not only that, we're going to give our hot takes on why our predictions are what they are. So, to start things off, we're going to start with Thursday Night Football. Pull it up. Bam. Who we got? We got the Jags going all the way over to New Orleans to face the Saints. Who we going with, boys? I got the Jags in this game, man. I got Trevor Lawrence having a big game uh, against these, uh, I guess you'd say, mediocre mediocre defense. Uh, Receivers are going to have a big game. I think Travis uh, Etienne is going to have two touchdowns. So, uh, blowout Jags. Blowout Jags. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with the Jags. ETN's going to do it again. I think he'll have another two. Uh, I think he'll be involved a little bit more in the passing, too. Christian Kirk needs to get back in it, too. I'd like to see him get some more balls. Maybe even, uh, I don't know. Who's their tight end? Evan Ingram? Is he? Yeah. Is he injured right now, or is he... No, I think he's, he's still, doing okay. I think he's still active. They need they need to plug him back into the into the script. We need to make this show blunts and punts because you guys smoke weed don't every know day. What the hell you're talking about what? First off, these guys no, they're not ready for this Saints team. Not very many teams are, and sometimes they come out a little flat. But let me tell you, this game coming in, they're coming out with. The Saints are coming in. I can tell you that. They're going to be playing that song. They're doing the Saints. I mean, yeah, yeah, no homo. They coming in this bitch. So, what's going to happen is the Saints are going to come out firing all cylinders like they used to with Drew Brees. And their car is going to look like old school Drew Brees. He's going to be healed up. The shoulder is going to be fine. He's going to be coming in, throwing them hot rockets to his hot receivers. Again, no homo. We're already canceled first five minutes. But they're coming in. Their own Superdome, the Mercedes, I think is what it's called. I don't know. Mercedes got like three fucking domes right now and fucking, uh, and, and, and whatever. Hilarious. Nico just left in the middle of the damn recording. But point being is the Saints are going to definitely blow them out. And by blowout, I mean definitely by 21 points. They're not going to get behind. They're going to keep the lead all the way through. The Jags are going to catch up at some points like they usually do, but they're going to pull away. Dude, you've been riding the Saints D all all year, man. And they have Look what they've anything built. to support anything you just said. Look what they've built. They have one of the best running backs in the NFL. They have one of the best quarterbacks. They had a quarterback with the most fourth quarter comebacks last season for the Raiders. Okay? Then they got their best damn near Hall of Fame receiver back that he's like the Calvin Johnson of the South. He is, man, Michael Thomas is the shiznit. And then you had Chris Olave and uh, and and the other, I forget the other kid. I'm brain farting the other kid's name right now. But <coughs> point being is he's, when Derek Carr has weapons, he shits. So, I mean. Yeah, dude, uh. That running back that you're named off doesn't even fall in the top ten of the NFL. Who, uh, Kamara? <laughs> Michael Thomas over the hill. Uh, I give you Chris Olave. They just don't feed him enough. And Derek Carr is just uh, mediocre. 
Their car is in that pack of quarterbacks of that needs to prove week. themselves this year before these new group of rookies come in to take their place or the rookies that are already here to come take their place. It's him, Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, people like them in that tier need to prove it. I think the quarterback that can prove it definitely is going to be Derek Carr. I think he's got a winner's mentality, and he just hasn't had the teams to get him over that hump more than he not be the person that get him over the hump. Kirk Cousins falls in that category too. But um, point being is, you know, Derek Carr is good enough to win games like this. And I think Trevor Lawrence is good enough to fall asleep on games like this. Well, I mean, that's what it comes down to is Trevor Lawrence. I mean, they're loaded with weapons all over the offense. So, I mean, it's going to come down to T. Lawrence, how, how far this team goes. But as for this week, Jags are taking this by a long, a long haul. For shizzle, for shizzle, for shizzle. Okay. Next game we got, guys, we got that damn Monday, oh, wait, no, Sunday night game, is it, right? Oh. We got to take a rip for that mistake right there. Right, clap it up for me, guys. <laughs> Man, I got the damn audio recorder still on the damn screen. I'm effing up right now. But we got that, that Sunday night game. Um, who is it? The what? The do- oh. oh, yeah, we got the Dolphins. Going to Philly. Yeah, I remember it now. Okay, we got the Dolphins going to Philly. Damn. That's a that, that's a tough one. I feel like Philadelphia is pissed off about the game that of the last week. game. But what y'all, what do y'all think? Week. Oh, man. Uh, this one's tough. Uh, it's in the League of Financial Field, Philadelphia. I like the Dolphins because the Dolphins, uh, man, their offense is too explosive. The speed is unreal. Eagles have a really good defense, too. I, I feel like they can contain them. Uh, but if you give them too many chances, the Dolphins will run up that scoreboard. For that reason, I think um, I think the Eagles are going to run a little bit heavy on the run. Uh, I, I, I don't see Jalen Hurts having a big game. I don't see those receivers, Devontae and, and, uh, and A.J., uh, having a big game. I think they're going to rely on that running game, keep the ball out of – the speedsters' hands for the Dolphins, and uh, they get out of there with the win. So, as much as I want to, as much as I think it's going to be a high-scoring game because you have two explosive offenses, I think they're they're not going to have enough time for those offenses to see too many possessions. So, I think uh, I think Eagles in this one, and it's going to be a close game. I think twenty-one seventeen. Damn, you don't think they're going to hold the? You think they're going to hold the Dolphins to seventeen points? <clears throat> I think they hold them to seventeen. And I think they don't give them too many chances. That's why they're holding the 17. Not that they can contain completely the Dolphins' offense. I just don't think they get too many looks. I actually want to believe that the Dolphins' head coach has been waiting for this type of game um, because he's been waiting to pop out with his offense, kind of like how Shanahan and how Stefanski to do coach the damn Eagles right now. Um, how they popped out their offenses like early in the season and rolled that all the way to the Super Bowl. I think that that's what he about to do right now, just like he tried last season. Um, and I don't think it's going to be so much as Tua and uh, Tyreek. I think it's going to be more the running game and using the other receivers and the other tools um, that they have. And I think they're going to pull out some things that he may have been practicing like the Eagles. Maybe that little scrum or something. Maybe the Dolphins try it and, you know, beat the Eagles at their own game type of situation is what I'm kind of seeing. Definitely because they're going to Philly. This is going to be their first chance of playing a cold weather game and stuff like that. So you really want to go in and smack them in the damn mouth if I were the Dolphins. So that's what I'm rolling with is I think the Dolphins are going to come do that. And they're going to surprise them, and the Eagles are going to losing streak and scare everybody. What about you, Bach? I like the Dolphins, man. I really do. I'm not, like, I think Tua's one bad hit away from death, but. <laughs> right, from the crossbones on his eye and shit. Yeah, honestly. As much if he as gets I hurt, say, you can just wrap the season up. Right, always. Yeah. I mean. Like he's got he's got incredible weapons. Like his backfield, like 
even when A Chain is out, Moster picks up right where they left off. Yeah, I was saying Jeff uh, Jeff Wilson coming off IR here pretty soon. Yeah, Jeff Wilson is also a weapon. Tyreek Hill is like just incredible enough to catch every underthrown ball that Tua throws. Because <laughs> he's just that fast and that good of a route runner. But, I mean, and they're getting Waddle back in his groove, too. He was, he had a slow start, but, I mean, it could be a shootout, honestly. It could be a TD exchange. Quarters, and then, like, 32-28, something like that. That's what I'm thinking right there. Scoring, yeah. I'm thinking, like, 35-38 Dolphins win by a field goal in Philly or some shit like that. Like, I'm thinking high-scoring affair over 40, you know, combined. And yeah, I'd say the fireworks spark. I say thirty-one twenty. My math was a little. I think it could be a field goal decider, honestly. <laughs> Tom, <Don't. laughs> you won't. The uh, the Dolphins. Hey, I'll fucking take it. Fuck you, Miranda. Smoke weed every <laughs> day. He goes twenty-one seventeen. <laughs> Write it down. That's, right, what, exactly. that's what Rick said to that Write shit. Write that shit down. Right, they gonna sue me you now. You would have like that as your logo too. Mo- huh? <laughs> right, they gonna take our logo and do the same thing. And Rick and Mo- you gonna flash us during your shit. I flash you during our shit. Anyway, next game, we got the Monday night game, right? Monday night game is going to be the Niners going to, yeah, Vikings, right? Yep. Yeah, anyway, yeah. It's going to be the night. It's going to the baby. Woo! And you know what? This is a very interesting game because I feel like this is a game where Kirk Herzens comes out and gives the, you like that, and does his fucking thing out there. But they don't have Justin Jefferson, so that's the scary thing right there, I believe. I think he's out this week, if I remember right. So that scares me because... That is the only reason why Kirk Cousins hasn't been thrown to the chopping block so far is because Justin Jefferson has saved him with his out-of-this-world catch radius. Dude is only like 6'2", 6'3", if I remember correctly. This catch radius is like Calvin Johnson, who's fucking like 6'5", 6'6". Look this shit up. Fucking crazy. Dude is fucking wildly fucking athletic. But anyway, this is who the fuck Kirk Cousins get to throw to on a regular basis. And due to that, he saves him on a lot of shit. But he doesn't have that weapon. So I think it's not going to be a you like that type of night for him when it comes to Monday night. And I think Purdy and them going to get back on the, on the good foot and spank that ass in that new stadium really, really good. So I'm thinking like a 14-point, 21-point game here. I'm going to ride with a... Mm-hmm. With no Justin Jefferson and an almost decent running game, I'll give him a, a 28-14, 28-17, somewhere around in that range. Going with the with the 49ers for that one, 28-17. What are you guys <coughs> thinking? Man, uh, let me kind of address what you just said there because you said that Kirk Cousins <laughs> – uh, would be ran out of here if it wasn't for Je- Justin Jefferson. I don't know if you watched any Vikings games, but if KJ Osborne can catch a fucking code, his stats will be a little bit better than what they show. Mm-hmm. And he's showing some pretty good stats this year. Like his passing yards, I think he's top five in the NFL. Uh, so I mean, he's I mean he's Kirk Cousins as bad as a quarterback as I think he is. He's having a really good year, man. So he always uh, does. <laughs> his, his, his stats are empty calories. And my, he's a, like I said, I haven't given my list yet, but I'll make an official list one day. But he's in that tier of quarterbacks that's like either you're about to become a backup or be out of the NFL. I mean, he's not and tier one. He's definitely in. not tier two. Uh, I mean, you can make a case right now. You may be somewhere lenient around like tier four. Uh, yeah, but he's that. on the old contracts, money-wise. Uh, so the new rookies and the people who are showing good progress are going to be getting that new money. And then these mm-hmm. old people are going to be getting shipped out. And like I said, being backups are out of the NFL at that point. But as for the game, uh, man, I think the Niners, are they took an ass-whooping on that, you know, for their offense. Mm-hmm. They faced the best defense in the NFL. I kept t- like I kept telling you, man, I said the Browns' defense is real. And they got and they saved their there. ass a lot. 
last yeah. week. And, and it, it's going to be like that all year, dude. And the like offense corner, just found dude. a way, seriously. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I like the Niners in this because I think the Niners are going to bounce back. I think it's going to be a Brock Purdy party going on in Minnesota. I think Brock's going to have himself a three-touchdown game. Touchdown! Uh, get the running game going and stuff. I think, I think the Niners are going to come in and just dominate on defense. I, I see this as a blowout. I hate uh, to 34. do them for fantasy because they fucking their their players just are anonymously anonymously <laughs> getting yeah. stats all over the fucking field. But I, I mean, but they got they got good receivers. I mean, Debo. They got Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is the number one on anybody Jeez. else's football team. Like that. And they got a uh, wide receiver Nico. too. You look like you got something on your mind. Let me get the yeah. score out though. Let me get the, let me get the score out though. Thirty four seventeen. Go ahead. 34 17, go ahead. Damn, okay. Yeah, blow up. So the Vikings are either going to get bitch slapped at home or this is a trap game. How so? Um, well, basically, trap. it's either going to be Christian McCaffrey all the way or, honestly, Brock Purdy could get gonna play. blown away by uh, Daniel Hunter. I don't think McCaffrey's going to play. You sure? Uh, from what I've heard, he did get hurt during that Browns game. Yeah, he, him and Trent Williams and and uh, another person got hurt. That Just came week. came out today. It said it isn't considered to be dealing with a long term injury and could be available for What's Monday's today? game against damn it. the Bucks. Say the damn date, Nico. Stop being unofficial. Debo was the other one that got hurt by the way stat. in that Browns game. What huh? do you mean? Say the date. What day are you reading this? Damn it! This had came out five hours ago. Okay. Anyway, what did the report say? <laughs> it said McCaffrey yeah, isn't, con- yeah, isn't considered to be dealing with a long-term injury and could be available for Monday's game against the Vikings. He's going to play. and He's going to be a decoy, and somebody else is going to pop it off for the 49ers, and Brock Purdy is just going to facilitate it like a good point guard does. Brock Purdy could get blown out by Daniel Hunter. I mean, if I'm the guy, it's not a, it's <laughs> that not a doesn't fun. sound right, but I get what you're saying. I mean, and that's what really if messed him up last week Christian. versus the Browns is he went against the actual elite D lineman in Miles Garrett, and Miles Garrett blew his ass up a whole bunch of times. Like I seen that coming a mile away a, an elite the defense, people not just a player but but he was the main person who was making it all happen in the sense of the turnovers and the fourth downs and sh- yeah the defense was there but he's the captain definitely you know everyone's got their eyes on micah parson they need to have their eyes on the bria yeah, the browns defense is real for real but yeah the niners are just on a on a different level when it comes to using. So yeah, McCaffrey can play. He'll be a decoy, and then they can use fucking you know three other people on their offense. Kittle, we should just use Kittle if they're if, if they're if always going to use Kittle. Kittle. Kittle is like Kittle Kelsey. He he's like their Swiss Army knife in the sense of you know he's going to be the person creating the havoc amongst the defense pre-play or during the play. Always, see that he's always going to have him in a frazzle. So I mean. I think that would be an interesting Super Bowl, no lie, the Browns versus the 49ers, because I think they're one and two for defense or some shit. They, uh, you know, I think the Niners really got a test with everything last week against the Browns, so I I feel like this is one of their bounce-back games where they're Mm going to test a lot of stuff to verify that, hey, are they a good team? Are they a good team to make a deep run? Like, what? This, I mean, this is, you see what happened when they faced a real defense. Mm -hmm. Their passing game folded. Like, when they don't have a running game, it folds. So this might be a heavy passing game for the Niners because, you know, I mean, they're playing the Vikings. It's not like they're playing, you know, a must-win game against, you they're know, average the Eagles everywhere. The Vikings aren't above average anywhere. Like, their corners are just average. Their linebackers are – actually, their D-line is above average. I will say that. But other than the D-line, everywhere else on their defense is, is pluckable. If you, if you do the right plays and stuff like that to them. So. Right, and, and for that, I, th- I feel like this is going to be an experiment game for the Niners. Right, and, and the plays are going to end up touchdowns. That's the crazy thing because they're not going to be prepared for them film-wise. Yeah. So what do you think, Nico? Did you say your score already? No, I didn't say the score. I, I, I think it could be like, oof, I don't know, Purdy... 
going against a sack leader, that always makes me a little intrigued. I think it could be like 20, 28-21, um, 49ers. You think yeah, Kirk Cousins looks. is going to keep him up? You think that defense is going to keep up with him like that, huh? Oh, I mean, honestly, at first, before I really, like, I didn't I didn't realize how good Daniel Hunter actually is, but Daniel I think he could be the key on the Vikings defense, but um, I thought it was I thought they were going to score a lot more honestly at first. I was going to go with a higher one on the 49ers end. It's a Daniel Hunter nigga, I ain't going to have that nigga hunt me. <laughs> Whatever, buddy. Say that Daniel, nigga's name Daniel, right. Shit, he ain't about to bird man from. me. Hey, I've, I've actually but met some of the Vikings players. Like, I'm a fucking star drop. I ain't going to say how I met them. But I've actually been to the mall with hilarious. <laughs> I've actually been to the mall with uh, Daniel Hunter. And, and bought we bought not matching Viking hats, but we bought Viking winter hats for the game the next day. And let me tell you, this guy's truck is huge like he's already a huge individual like he's like six foot seven six foot eight and then his truck is like seven foot two seven foot five he got an ultra lifted truck so he got like a big ass farmer truck and then it like it's like the truck that gotta have two wheels on each side type of truck and then he on Did he buy your ring right afterwards too hilarious f f off no it was i was out with a group but that was this car stood out amongst everybody because it took up like three parking spots it was big as shit he's six eight there ain't no way he's six eight yo look that shit up at mo at least six six but yeah he's above six six man, definitely he's giving big us as fuck. nba stats man there's no way you know how the nba puts in just on big players he's eyes. big as shit dude look it up he's big as shit and six he, five two sixty three dude he's bigger than that <laughs> well, he was bigger than I mean, that. close he, enough i mean i'm sure he's just built like a six eight oh dude he's mm. fucking huge but no homo um <laughs> 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 Escorts, hats, and we're canceled. Big. Just like that, everybody. <laughs> um, so, I don't know what the fuck the next game is because I left my phone in the room. <laughs> Hold up, I got you. So, while somebody looks the game up, let me guys take you into a session because I'm going to do this high shit a lot. Uh, thank God I didn't bet on that. Did you guys see this fucking game yesterday with the gosh damn bills? Oh my goodness. When I say... Thank God I didn't bet on that. Thank God I didn't bet on Josh Allen's ass. Because Take two, motherfucker. That game was not loud. Yeah, that shit was Sunday night. <laughs> Sunday night. You know what the hell I'm saying. Thank God that I didn't bet on that game. I don't know when the fuck it happened, but then when I watched it, I was like, damn, I'd be mad if I bet on this damn game because Josh Allen is just letting the damn shit hit the fan, and he ain't wiping up nothing. It was horrible. So, yeah. Anyway, what's the first afternoon game? Browns and some... Um, Browns and Colts? Browns versus Colts. Browns. Oh, that's easy. Oh, wait, Fuck. no, I lied. That's, it's uh, Vegas and uh, Chicago. Vegas, Vegas and, and Chicago. For afternoon? For, for 3 o'clock? One, at, 1 o'clock. No, no, the 3 o'clock games. Oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, then the first... That would be Pittsburgh at Los Angeles. Pittsburgh at Los Angeles. What, Chargers or Rams? Rams. I'm going to take the Rams on this one. The Rams are a really solid, sneaky team. Their defense is really solid, sneaky. They got a really, really good linebacker core. They have a very, very, very good deal. Aaron Donald on a damn D-line is automatically above fucking average and all those things. So that's an easy pick in my part, fucking Rams. Who going next? <laughs> oh, yeah, Rams by a blowout, man. Steelers are trash. The offense is trash. Their defense is good, though. Their defense will keep them in a lot of games. Right, and, but, and it'll make it a close game. So I'll say 17-14, yeah, but Rams is going to pull it out. Um, I'll do twenty four twenty. I'll do twenty four twenty one. I think they'll give me the give me points towards the end. I think it'll, you know they'll have they'll have them on the ropes twenty one ten and then allow a touchdown or you know all that shit and towards the end. 
Hey! What you thinking, Nico? So Rams. I think it's gonna be like they could they could put up forty two on on these fools, the Rams. <laughs> it's it's gonna be a blowout. The Rams are gonna put in work. It's over. Pittsburgh's garbage, dude. I'm tired of I'm giving them chances. They're, they're, they're tired trying of to get their a players. Ben Roethlisberger two going here, but I think he's only going to be raping bitches in the bathroom at this point. He ain't going to. But you have to give it. But you have to give it to their Bowl. defense, man. Like these guys are sitting three and three, I think, on the year or something like that, and their defense is one of every one of those games. Who? Steelers. They are. I mean, they're AFC uh, North team. So, I mean, AFC North is, you know, fucking known for stout defenses. So, I mean. Yeah. I mean, they beat Baltimore. I think they beat Baltimore with their defense. They sure as hell beat Cleveland with their defense in week two on prime time. Hmm. I mean, they, they, that defense just wins them games. I don't know how he does it, but how Mike Tomlin does it, but he gets that defense ready and they win games for some reason. But I still go with Rams. Go ahead. I don't, they need Deontay Johnson back before anything. No, they need everything. They need a quarterback. They need a running back. They need a line. Shit, and he can't do anything. He's just that dude mm-hmm. is overweight and should not be a running back. And so he got the Eddie Cheeseburger Lacy disease. Yeah, Hilarious. exactly. He's got something because <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, no, no. Now that like Cooper Cup's back, I mean, Puka Nakua still get work, so it's right. It's Matthew, yeah, once Matthew Stafford gets weapons, it's over. So what? What yeah. score did you say? You said a blowout, Nico. What score did you say? Uh, give me, give me, uh, give me thirty-eight to fourteen. <laughs> what's the next? Blow what's the next water. game? Here, while you look up the next game, I'm gonna go get my phone, and I ain't gonna cut. You guys gonna wait for me to run through my house and get my phone? Look up the next game, nigga. <laughs> Um, so that's Arizona at Seattle. <clears throat> Should we wait for him to come back? Yeah, probably. Hurry up, my son needs a bath. He said, All right, that. Arizona at Seattle, Lewis. Arizona at Seattle, man. <laughs> now. You should say Seattle should look. I'm unwrapping my cord and shit and record. You should say Seattle will win this game, but I think Arizona can pull this one out of their ass and beat Seattle because they just be doing dumb shit. Pete Carroll might be getting dementia or some shit. He just be doing dumb shit for real. Like him and him and him and him and Staley or Stanley for the fucking charge. They gotta be the two one of the yeah. Them niggas on something. This season. I'm, I'm taking Seattle on this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kenneth Walker's coming on back from the injury. Um, he's doing work. He's he's easily in this in this league. He's a top five running back, in my opinion. Uh, give me Seattle for – I'm going to go 20 to 17. Hey! I'll say Arizona – and I'll say Arizona is going to win hmm, 20 to 14, 21 to 14. It's going to be like a walk-off something. Like they're going to like go into overtime. Like it's going to be a game like that, 14-14 the whole game and walk-off mm-hmm. overtime, some shit like that, 2014. So that's when I'm – and I'm going with Arizona for mine. Go ahead, Vakwa. Uh, I think this is going to be a low-scoring one. Um, I got Seattle. I like what Kenneth Walker's doing as well, but I'll take it 20 to twenty to 7. I don't even know who the hell I just picked. That's how high I am at this point. I think Seattle. <laughs> <Arizona. part. laughs> I think I hope I said Arizona. That's who I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking trap game, so... Hopefully, I'm not catching Pete Carroll's dementia knock on wood. Shit, that nigga probably fucking put right, right now. Um, Pete Carroll's high. You know, that nigga definitely get high. He been getting high with, <laughs> since Reggie Bush was getting high and fucking after games and giving interviews or taking interviews and fucking bitches and fucking Kim. Anyway, um, oh, yeah. next game is going to be, I don't know, how about the, what did you say? 
Next game is Green Bay at Denver. Green Bay at Denver. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. Hopefully they don't sue us for me saying that shit. Um... I'm going to say Green Bay in this one. I think Russell Wilson is really showing his age. Are Sierra giving him too much pussy before the games or just too much pussy during the season in general? I can't blame him, so I ain't really mad at him. I wouldn't be mad at him either if I was a Broncos fan. I'd just be like, fuck it, nigga. I'd let that shit happen too if I was married to Sierra. Anyway, um, shit, she do all that shit from the first single all the way to the last single. We can do all them dances right on my twerk. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me, Russ. Yours, not mine. I got, yeah, anyway. I have mine, dude. Anyway, yeah. We need to worry about Russ aging at this point. Like, at this point, I think they're definitely going to be getting Caleb Williams. <laughs> they're definitely getting the first-round draft pick at this point because, yeah, it isn't looking too frosty or looking too good for them right now. He needs to get put on ice immediately. So I think Jordan Love is going to come in there and get back on a good foot um, and show his worth and uh, prove that he's the new light-skinned quarterback of the NFL. Fuck you, Russell. And he trying to get somebody like Ice Spice or Ice Latte or whatever the hell her name is. That's going to be his bitch that's going to distract him down the road. Anyway, who you got? Yeah, I'm taking Green Bay as well on this one. That defense is fucking garbage for Denver. Jordan Love's going to go in there and have a field day. Receivers gonna get some work, even though they're no names. I don't know if that um, defense is garbage. Did you see? Did you see the the almost game winning pick from Patrick Sertan at the end of the game? I didn't say Pat Sertan was garbage. I said that fucking defense is garbage. The D line is the linebackers are average, and the corners are definitely above average. But yeah, I think that they're definitely it's gonna that defense be defense as a whole is a fucking garbage. I the think the I, I, I think Green Bay can score, but I don't think they can score that much. So I'm gonna say something like around 24 or 14 or some shit like that. Well, I'm gonna go 31 to seven. That defense Damn. is fucking garbage. You think Green Bay about to pull it out like that? They are. That's some Jay Slay shit right there. 31-7, write it down. That defense is going to write this down, dude. That defense is about. fucking garbage. Huh? I said write that down, too. That defense is fucking garbage. Hilarious. Well, there goes the hot take right there. We need the little piece of poop that dropped down. I don't know if they let us do that shit. Yeah, just drop it down right there. Hot take of the day. The whole team is garbage. From the janitor all the way up to except Patrick Sertan. Patrick Sertan and 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 was not Jerry Judy though. No. Did you guys see the squabble between Steve Smith and uh, Jerry Judy? Yeah, Jerry. Last yeah. week during yeah, yeah, Thursday yeah, night football. Saying. Yeah, basically he was saying like uh, you know Steve Smith tried to apologize because he was saying some negative things about on some shit about like Jerry this Jerry about how saying, he, like, he, he didn't specifically fuck with him and shit. said he sucked. <clears throat> yeah, he specifically wow. said he sucked. Oh, you should go if you guys haven't so looked it up. I'm, I'm not gonna go steal NF Network shit and they sue us, but go look it up and yeah, I'll find that. and and Steve. see Steve Smith talking shit about Jerry Judy hilarious because he was ready to fight Steve that was, nigga formally Steve was saying yeah Steve was saying like he was like yeah when these when these calls come in from other NFL owners like I'm telling them not to trade for you <laughs> like, hilarious like, he, he said he said I'll oh, f with that ninja hilarious <laughs> on live TV on Amazon Prime he said, I walked up to Jerry Judy and he said, get that ninja away from me. I don't F with that ninja. <laughs> he didn't use ninja, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> Hilarious. It's a, hard, it's a little hard for Russell to win games right now, man, when he doesn't have a good defense behind him. It's, it's a little hard <laughs> for everybody in Denver to win without wanting to go smoke a blunt afterwards. So I'm going to blame it on the drugs in Sierra at this point. And again, who can blame him? Everyone would do the same exact damn thing in that situation. So, okay, next game we got, I think, uh, the Chiefs and hang Chargers. On, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, Nico didn't give us one? No. He didn't, did he? I? No, I didn't. Go ahead. I'm Sorry. I jumped the uh, gun. 
Green Bay, 21-10. Hey! Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I don't fuck with Denver. Um, they're... Nor should they're, you. I'm, huh? I said, nor should you. Nor should I, right, yeah. Steer clear of Denver. I fuck with them for their drugs. Mm. And I'm just hoping that... I'm hoping that Christian Watson finally gets work done for Green Bay. I think he could be a promising receiver if he can just stay healthy. Mm. I think he's going to play this week. Okay. Yeah, okay. Good to go. Sorry, now right. we can go to the next game, right? Mm-hmm. I took my mistake bong rip right there. Chargers at the Chiefs, I believe. Yes, Chargers coming all the way to Kansas City. They're trying to get that Kansas City kush. Because I think the Chiefs is about to slap that ass in that face and get in that red eye and that big lump on the side of their head right here. Because, man, when I say that team is like, it isn't horrible. But in my opinion, Justin Herbert is in that pack of quarterbacks that is one or two years away from either becoming a backup or getting shipped out of the NFL. Because, dude, just... (laughs) <laughs> like he makes frustrating no mistakes man like it ain't like okay I'm not saying like he's not talented I'm not saying he can't throw <laughs> I'm not saying he can't throw the ball out of the stadium you know but it's just little shit where it's like you'd be like dude how don't you know how to do that shit by now so like example if you're such a, a running quarterback and such a fast quarterback Go back and look at this dude's fucking running highlights so far this season. Dude don't even know how to fucking cut. He don't know how to cut. He doesn't know how to fucking make moves to get like other than running people over or shuffling to the side after getting tackled or trying to fake stiff arm people. Dude has no moves at all for a quote unquote running quarterback. Then on top of that. He has no consistency with his arm unless that shit is on air. And even on air during a game, he gets so fucking giddy, he be fucking overthrowing and underthrowing passes. He literally, just this last fucking night against the Cowboys, go back and look at every single one of his throws, and you'll see an inconsistency to where it's like, dude, if you really that talented, why are you missing and not making throws consistently enough to get your team points like you? Like so many people who love him, you know, would tell he gets 5,000, 6,000 yards, blah, blah, blah. Well, he's faded out now. When you got three years of tape on someone who's just talented and isn't smart and their coaches aren't smart and they don't have any other veterans around them, then you get found out really, really fast. And I think Justin Herbert is at that point right now where he needs to nuance and go to another team, like I said, and be a backup and take someone's spot, or he just going to be out and and Staley or Stanley, whatever the fuck his name, just ruined his career because that whole offense is just in shambles as to, like, what needs to happen. But I'm going to stop ranting. What do y'all think? <laughs> Look, that's a mistake. I'm going to take my rip for that one. First of all, nobody thinks Justin Herbert is a running quarterback in this league. He ran like a 4-6. So, That's a running quarterback. He ran just as fast not, not as Not a running Prescott. quarterback. He's a pocket passer. But second of all, I'm taking the damn Chargers. And He's a, a dual threat Sorry, quarterback. Sorry, a shootout. Taking them in a shootout. 38-34. I think uh, dealing with Austin Eckler, dealing with the weapons out there, Keenan Allen. I mean, Keenan Allen's still fucking doing it. You know, seems like 10 years later. Um, you know, Jordan Palmer, good receiver. They got weapons. <clears throat> I don't see defenses dominating. I don't see defenses stopping anything. I think it comes down to a last possession. I think uh, Chargers get a win, 38-34. Okay, okay, okay. Damn, that's a high one. Um, that's it. This is actually tough. This is a tough one. What do you think, Bob? You're the last of the Mohican on this one. No pun. Yeah, the I know. Because I don't know if they can beat the Chiefs. Like, I think Justin uh, killing me with the Justin Herbert comments. I <laughs> know, <laughs> right? He's going crazy. How? Like, they're just not. Like, it's not him. Like, the, San Diego's just never been in a winning environment. Well, like, but you're right. I'm, and 
I would agree that I'm not saying that he's the type of guy who's going in there and being a nuisance and being a negative player and acting like he know how to play quarterback since he was six years old and shit like that. But the people around him, like I said, are either not coaching him or putting him in a position to win, kind of like the Justin Fields situation. Like, dude is talented out of this world, but the plan that you put together for that talent don't match what the hell he can produce. So it's like you need to either change who the fuck is feeding him the plays or you need to change the player. Like you need to change how Justin Herbert think of things or you need to change who is giving Justin Herbert the things to do. I mean, I, honestly, this could go into overtime, I feel like. This could this is going to be a shootout. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Well, I mean, you want to know what? Could, the Chiefs like, defense is like average. 34, 31. Their D line is above average, but everywhere else is average on the, you know, the corners and linebackers Oops. are in. So the Chiefs. Uh, oh. They're not that good on defense. That's why them niggas is having close games. I don't see. Man, like I'm saying, man, it's not going to be a defensive game. It's going to be all offense. All offense moving up and down. But the Chargers can't score. That's their problem. They can't. They're fucking having the Cowboys right. They can't score in the red zone. They can't score on the other team. They they can only do surprise scores, like as someone Keenan Allen breaking out, Austin Eckler breaking out, some shit like that. Like it ain't no scripted touchdowns happening with these motherfuckers right now. So I don't trust them. I mean, at that's all. that's where their bread and butter's at. Is dumping it off to the backs and in the flats and, and shit. And people so. figure that out again. But you those guys are. But, those, tape him but those guys are shit. skilled enough to do that stuff. So once they start dumping it off in the flats and they start dinging and diming you, it's going to open up the stuff over the top. You're going to see Keenan Allen have some big plays, 60-yard touchdowns, 50-yard touchdowns, whatever that's it is. That's the only way they can win. That's the only way they can win. So, uh, yeah, everyone's picking the Chiefs, right? It's just going to be a shootout. I'm the only one that's picking them to blow them out. Hell no. I just said the Chargers. The Chargers, 38-34. <laughs> got to take the rip right now for the mistake. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, I think, Nico, you, did you took the Chargers or you took the Chiefs? I took the Chargers in overtime, 34-30. What? You must. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take two because you must. And take a big one for the ass whooping the, the Niners took last year, last week. Because you were definitely wrong on that one. Guys, you going to pass out. <laughs> no one knows about Chargers last week. Receivers also need to catch the ball, too. <laughs> yeah, they do. We're going to be right at weapons, man. And they need to start giving it to Quinn. They drafted Quinn and Johnson first round, and he got one target last night, and he and it got picked off by Gilmore. Mm. That's the thing with Herbert. He has a, I think he has the most interceptions in the fourth quarter but he also has the most game winning fourth quarter drive since entering the league that's because motherfuckers, <laughs> motherfuckers have to hand him a game like last night he got hand Dak Prescott that literally that's Dak Prescott's MO is handed motherfucking quarterback games he handed Herbert that game and Herbert didn't, I don't know what the fuck. Like, you don't expect him to blitz you, nigga? Like, come on, man. It's the he last missed a, play. He missed a few open targets. Like right. Three, and, three, and, three and, dude, yards. you that quick. Dude, move your damn feet. Get out of the pocket. Get the ball out of your hands. Whether you throwing a, get out of the fucking passer box. So you can get the yeah, ball yeah, out of your hand however than, you need to. Yeah, he yeah, had, actually had, better had better numbers. Just Dak numbers. Dak did, he, yeah, he did have better numbers, but. Yeah, but he was hitting his he was hitting his receivers though. Like that was fucking unlike Dak. Dak was actually throwing the ball more than ten yards, which is like <sighs> fucking that never happened. Yeah, they put C D Lamb to work, thank God. Yeah. Super early too. Nah, I'm not a really right, big fan of the Cowboys, but anyway, I think that's it for this segment right now. So we're gonna take a break. And touch our dicks with some powder dust or some shit like that. Whatever the stars do or dip it in coke or whatever the fuck. I don't know. But that's the fuck we're going to do.